we could actually say Pan was born in the junkyard and usually places like this, you know, the noise, you couldn't go any, near anybody's house. So, we were outlawed to the junkyard. Steel drums, known locally as pans, developed with the arrival of the oil industry on the island of Trinidad in the 1940s. The availability of 55-gallon oil drums, combined with the tradition of turning discarded objects into musical instruments, created a unique musical art form. To do the actual sink in, it takes approximately half an hour to 45 minutes. And then we use this, which we call leveling, smoothening. Where do you get the barrels? Gas station, a uh, uh, company that imports barrel, like this one. This scary gold that was imported from Ireland. Is anything goes. What happened to them if you didn't use them? Well, there'll be discarded drums all over the country, but since we use them, you, you hardly see them because there's a lot of steel band. So, there isn't enough to go around. Let's go one, one, two, three, one, two, three. Once you're involved in the steel band, a great amount of discipline is required and you see always where it spills over to the academics. It's a very, very positive thing now, not like in the past. During that time, it was not the middle class, it was the poor class was playing pan. We had bands up in Laventil, we had bands in Junjun, we had bands all over and we used to go to the various gas stations and um, oil company. In those days we had BP, we had SO, we had Shell, and these various gas stations and company. And when they finished, they used the gas from them and the oil from the drum, they used to pack it in the back. And we then, eventually, we, who could buy, will buy, but most of us used to go and steal these drums. Eventually, they start trying to tune these um, 45 gallons. Their interplay came Ellie Manet from Woodbrook Invaders Steel Barn. Ellie Manet is the first guy who stopped tuning the pan, thinking the pan in, and decide to sink the pan and groove notes on those pans. That's what we have today. I have experience playing with um, the London Philharmonic, and there are times when the tenor pan is being played right alongside of the violins, and you can barely distinguish the tone of the pan from that of the violin. It all stems, one, from the manner in which the instrument has been made. It is tempered at a particular temperature, so it produces that organ-like tone. It is patterned along the lines of, let's say, the voice. So you have the soprano pan, or what we would call the tenor pan, being the leading voice. You have the alto, which is the, like the double tenor. The tenor, which is like really tenor bass, actually. And the bass would be the big drums that fall straight to the ground. So you have that orchestral effects coming right there. 
So the people who actually make the pans, they tune the instrument in such a way that they can be on par, tonally speaking, on par with those other conventional instruments. It started with about four notes, you know. It's marked and separated. This is where you get the individual notes, separation by the groove. The bigger the size, the lower the note. The smaller the size, the higher the note. Without us, the steel band will cease to function. They must have tuners to tune the instrument and keep it in tune. It's supposed to be E flat. Steel band is the national instrument of my country. These guys took the ordinary steel drum, old drum that we throw, and make an instrument and play music. A marvel. <laughs>